Hello and welcome to the Mount Hope Church podcast. In a world that's dominated by fear, so many people are looking for a sense of security and preservation that they can count on. We're called to awaken a generation. Amen, church? We're awakening a generation to the things of God. We believe that the road to a better life begins with a relationship with Jesus. Join us now for a positive and lifting message that will help you move forward in your walk with Christ. And so Christianity is an active, I like to use sports, it's an active sport. It's, it's, it's your action, you're getting ready. And now, here's Pastor John Gallinetti. This year, I just, I just love talking about, about Thanksgiving and not where we, you know, sit around and eat turkey and stuffing seven times over, but um, the power of real Thanksgiving. And there's a lot of people that, you know, that, oh yeah, I gotta be grateful. Yes, I gotta be grateful and all that. And, and there is a difference when the Holy Spirit burns this subject into your heart and the power that comes with it is absolutely astounding, the power of thanksgiving. And so as simple as it may is, there's a lot of people that that fail to connect the dots as it relates to it. Some years ago, I was in uh, South Florida, and uh, it was breakfast, and um, across the other of the room was an older gentleman who was uh, expressing his de-appreciation for the salt shaker. And um, it wasn't working according to his, the way he thought it should work. And he really, he, 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 he let loose on the waitress. And I'm just going, seriously? It's, the sun is bursting the skies outside. It's 80 degrees. You're retired and you're living on all your funds. And all you're doing now is focusing. Of course, I didn't say this. I'm just thinking, you have conversations in your mind, don't you? No. <laughs> so I'm having this conversation. I'm going, seriously, I mean, the sun is bursting in the skies. It's 80 degrees outside. It's an absolutely beautiful day. It's a day that the Lord has made, whether you want to say it or not. And you're just cutting loose on this poor waitress because the salt shaker is not working according to plan. I think there's a song about that, isn't it? Some, some other song. I shake her salt. So anyways, there's something about being thankful that creates an atmosphere for great things to happen in our lives. And again, I know that, that, that you know, the pat answer, I know that cliche, oh yes, be, be grateful, yes, grateful, you know. Not just one day out of the year, well, I'm thankful that we have that as a country. But every day, expressing thanksgiving to God. And you have a mouth and I have a mouth. We have a heart. With that, we can always just be thankful. But there's something really special that creates an atmosphere of awareness of the Holy Spirit in our life and even the miraculous when we're thankful. I love what Psalm 100 says. It just says it all. It says, make a joyful shout unto the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with complaining. (laughs) Come before his presence with singing. You just did that. Know that the Lord, he is God. He is he that has made us, and we're not ourselves. You did not derive from a tadpole. You did not come from an ape. You were created in the image and likeness of Almighty God. Amen? Amen. And it goes on and it says, he, we have not made ourselves, we are his people, the sheep of his pasture. And that, that popular verse, enter his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise, be thankful unto him, and what? Bless his name, for the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to every generation. Every generation, his truth is moving on. And so then there's that all-time classic in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, which you've heard probably 10,000 times in your life, in everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. I don't thank God for everything, but while I'm in it, I can praise God and thank him, and it creates the atmosphere of great things to happen. So being thankful really does set the stage for amazing things that happen in our lives. There are breakthroughs and even miracles that can happen as a result of being thankful. 
And so I'm so thankful for the gift of salvation. I'm thankful that the Lord saved my life. But I have so much to be thankful for. The blood of Jesus has washed away all my sin. My miracle recovery from a 2% chance to live, which really is a 0% chance. But according to law, when I went back to write the book, I went and talked to the, the, the medical team there, and they said, John, we, we, we didn't, you know, we just, uh, you had a 0% chance to live, we, but we had to put something on there according to law, so we put 2%. I said, great, now I've got to change the book. <laughs> I'm so thankful for my miracle recovery the zeal and the power of God in my life, a beautiful wife that loves me, a great leadership team here at Mount Hope Church. Give yourself a hand. Yeah. The people of Mount Hope Church. And I'm grateful to be an American and to live in this great nation. I've been on 27, 28 mission trips, and there's nothing like America. Absolutely nothing. And America is only one of three nations that celebrates Thanksgiving, and I'm really happy that it does. Now, Thanksgiving is a specific act or practice that can open the floodgates to God's divine favor in our lives. I love this. Thanksgiving in the Hebrew actually means the opening up of divine favor. Can you say that with me? Opening up of divine favor. And so through Thanksgiving, we unlock the door of God's divine favor in our lives. It swings open as we express thanksgiving to God. You know, a lot of believers just think that, you know, they're going to they're gonna wait until something happens. But the Bible says faith without works is dead. As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. And so when we express that gratitude to God, when we thank God in, in your own way, you see, but out of your heart, and out of your mouth from your heart, you express that, you actually open up the door to God's divine favor in your life. Now, I don't know about you, baby. I need more of God's divine favor in my life. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Man, do I ever. And so I've been in some situations just not only in the ministry, but also just personally. Lord, I, just, I, need, your, I need your favor right now. I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, I'm just so grateful for what you're doing. But so huge, this is cool, so huge and important was thanksgiving to God and his people that kings and leaders set apart people just to say thank you to the Lord. This actually, they, they, they were, that was their position. That was their, that was their job, if you want to look at it that way. Just to say thank you to the Lord. And uh, Moses appointed priests to praise and thank the Lord for his goodness to them. <laughs> King David, when he brought back the ark into the temple, there was a huge ceremony that lasted for days. The first thing that they did was to bow before the Lord and thank him for his goodness. Now, the second thing, listen to this, he set apart people just to praise and thank the Lord from morning until night. From morning until night. And we're going to learn later on that we have taken up that office. We have taken up that office. And we are priests. You used to be a sinner. Now you're a saint. Oh, not me. If you're born again, sinners don't go to heaven. You have to become a saint of God. By the blood of Jesus, you become a saint. Thank you for your enthusiasm this Sunday morning. I appreciate it. But, but, but um, just so important is this. That's what King David would do. Moses did it. A lot of them did it. They just set up people just to praise the Lord from morning until night to say thank you. I got a, a, a video um, that Wendy uh, sent to me. He said, John, you have to see this. It's from the Trump election team. And they're just, they're singing, How Great Thou Art. I don't know if you see it, but I got, I just, is, is it okay if we just, yes. do I got your permission? Yes. Okay, great. But, but th this, is, this is just so cool. Th this is cool. <laughs>
Isn't that awesome? I just think, man, that's great. The Bible says when the righteous are in rule, the people rejoice. Wow. Oh, I just, oh my gosh, I just thought that. I, I just almost feel like singing that song right now. I just, how great, the King Jimmy, where, King Jimmy version. Dan's looking at me, not, no, Dan, that's okay, thank you. I appreciate your enthusiasm, I appreciate your enthusiasm so much. You know. you know the lyrics to that song, don't you? How great thou art. Oh, really? Well, Dan, let's go. You asked for it. It's your church. You feel on the spot, huh? But you can do it, huh? We've got so much to be thankful for. Amen. Well, we, we can't sit and sing oh, it. We got it. We got to We got to stand. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. Look at, I got a. Uh, how great washcloth on my desk, you see it. I need that. How great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art. What's the next verse in that? <laughs> oh, Lord, my God. Oh, yeah, that's it. When I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made. That's cool. I see the stars. I hear the rolling thunder. Thy power throughout the universe display. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art. How great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Oh, yes, I love it. That's like an oldie but a goodie, you know? That's an old, I, I pull that out every once in a decade or something. Said, You're kind of like Johnny on the spot, aren't you? You're just like. I remember when you played Elvis. <laughs> you had a suit on. You were just, just, just like him. It was so hilarious. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's great. Turn your neighbor saying, no other church but Mount Hope. <laughs> well, anyways, now it is Thanksgiving. Oh my gosh, thank you, Gary. You even brought my key back. It's so kind of you. Every now and then I perspire. And so. But uh, just like praise opens up and Thanksgiving opens up the door to God's divine favor, the opposite is very true, is that whining and complaining can open up the door to terrible things in our lives. I don't know if you know this, but uh, people are more prone. Do you, find, I mean, you ever find yourself that the more you grow in the Lord, the more positive you become? Yes. And if you really think about it, think about how positive Jesus is. Think how positive the Lord is. I mean, just, he's really something. He's so creative. He's so powerful. He's so incredible. And we're made in the image and likeness of him. Now we get born again. We become the righteous of God. We're no longer sinners we once were, but now we're the saints of God. Amen. And there's all these promises that, that we can possess and walk in. This is really something. But I, 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 think, I think it's, it's just, you know, it's easier to be negative than it is to be positive. And people are more prone to complain than to be thankful. 
Last Thursday, I was at an archery place. I had to bring in something. I had to check out. And the two guys were um, probably in their late 60s, early 70s. And they were, working on, they were working on a bow, and the desk was here, and I was watching everything. And one of them dropped a piece of equipment on the ground. And, and the guy bent over to, to get it, and he, oh, 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 and he was doing that. <laughs> you know, I'm sitting there, and I'm, I start, you know, I was holding back laughing. But, and, and he reaches, he says, oh, that's a long one. And the other guy stand there, it gets longer every year. <laughs> and I broke out, I mean, right there, Brown's Archery in Goodrich. I, I broke out, like, and they both looked at me like they were shocked. I said, what you just said is so stinking hilarious. <laughs> How many glad when you get older, you can get better? Yeah. All the things that were running through my mind when, when, when I hear things like that, I got a back like an ox, eyes like an eagle, and the strength of a lion, in Jesus' Whoa. name. Yeah. So I, some of you know this, but um, when we lived in the previous house we were at, um, had a neighbor named Louie, and uh, he was interesting. And he tried to solve the world's problems over a campfire with him and his relatives drinking beer. And um, one time we were, you know, having a get-together, and I, well, my family, and I was cooking a bunch of burgers on the grill, and, and his house was here, my house was here, I was on the back deck, and the, the top of the grill's face that way, and just all the smoke is billing up. It's like a sacrifice was happening. I mean, had like about 61 burgers on the grill. Probably not a wise thing to do. And, of course, the grease is hitting the fire. It's like the pillar of fire by night. And, and Louis comes out, and he looks. And I'm seeing him through the corner of my eye, and he's doing this. And he does a really interesting character. He's now passed away now. And he talked like this. Hey, John. Just like that. Just the voice would make you just roar. Hey, John. Hey, John! And I heard him the tw second time, but I didn't respond because I wanted him to do it again. Hey, John! <laughs> I, said, I said, hey, Louis, what's up? He said, what you cooking over there? I said, burgers, man, we're doing it up. And that's about all you can afford with all the kids you have. <laughs> and he walked into his house. <laughs> Where you work, are people grateful for their job? Jesus faced in his day ten lepers, and only one came back to give thanksgiving to God. A Los Angeles lifeguard was in um, conversation, uh, had an interview, and out of 223 people he rescued and saved their lives, only three came back to say thank you. I try to make a point. Every year in September, to go up to the ICU unit. Excuse me. Getting a little emotional right now. All right, well, anyways. And so I go up there because I'm so grateful that God resurrected me from the dead literally from the jaws of death. And uh, people ask, well, what, what did you, were your priorities not right? No, my priorities were right. I just got overzealous on a jet ski. That's all it was. It's simply, that's all it was. That's all it was. And God delivered me. Amen. But I tried to make a point to go up there and to thank the RNs and the medical staff that had a, had a big play in my recovery. Only three came back to say thank you. Jesus said, where are the other nine? God looks to be thanked. Jesus looks to be thanked. Where are the other nine? Only one? Complaining, whining, and being ungrateful. And I know you're not. I know most people are not. You know, we're grateful. But we use it as preventive medicine, some of these points I'm going to cover right now. Has its negative results in our life. Some of us have, have uh, come out of and, and been free from a complaining spirit. There's not only just complaining and whining, there's literally a complaining spirit. And so, in the Old Testament, the Israelites were complaining and griping, and, and it got to the point that it just, it just obviously something went wrong because 24,000 of them died as a result of a complaining spirit. 
Turn your neighbor and say, 24,000 is a lot of people. The Lord was always saying there are stiff-necked people. These people that, I mean, God just did miracle after miracle. I mean, created a highway in the middle of the Red Sea for them to cross over. There was just so much going on. Joshua and Caleb, Moses sets out a, a special ops team to go into the promised land. They come back, they say, surely the grapes are the size of basketballs. Man, this is incredible. But we be like grasshoppers in their sight. And that, that, that failure mentality swept through the whole nation. And it only compounded the whining. And, but Joshua and Caleb, you understand the story. They, they, were, they were the only two that rent their clothes and said, we must go in and conquer the land right now. If God be for us, who can be against us? We can do it. We can do it. And you can see the two different types, even though they were believers. All of them were believers. But you can see that the, the, the ones that, that had a faith-filled attitude and then the ten didn't. But what was so bad about it is that the, the, the negativity of the ten swept through and, and just kind of controlled the thinking in the Israelites. And God said, your bones will die in the wilderness and then Joshua and Caleb were the only ones of that generation with all their kids and went into the promised land. Isn't that something? Everyone say, I'll be thankful, I'll be thankful. <laughs> Listen to this in 1 Corinthians 10. It's given to us for our own admonition. And Apostle Paul is writing it and he's reminding us because none of us are exempt from falling away from the Lord. I don't care how strong you are. We need accountability. We need the local church. We need each other. We need small groups, we need classes, all that. And so, 1 Corinthians 10, Apostle Paul writes, and let us, let us uh, nor let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed by serpents, nor complain as some of them also complained and were destroyed by the destroyer. Wow. Now, all these things happened to them as examples and they're written for our admonition. They're written for my admon admonition. They're written for your admonition, whom the end of the ages have come. And so... A complaining, whining spirit has its negative feedbacks that we need to guard our heart against. Number two, it stops spiritual growth. The moment we become ungrateful, it stops spiritual growth. What does that mean? It means there's no revelation. Oh my gosh, we need revelation. The power of the Holy Spirit. This is why Apostle Paul wrote, I love in Philippians 2.14, do all things without complaining and disputing. Is that actually in the Bible? Do all things without complaining and disputing. The American Standard Version says this. Do all things without murmuring and complaining. The Amplified Bible says this. Do all things without grumbling and fault finding. You can't be around a worldly person too long before they begin to find fault in others. You can't. And so we have the opportunity to be the salt. Shaker. Little saker of salt. <laughs> okay. And to be, to, to, to be that salt, to be that life in that communication time where people want to tear down, we can build up. Yes. And uh, I'm sure you've probably been at some holiday get-togethers and, you know, and, 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 and sometimes they begin to go south a little bit. And someone asked me, because I wasn't responding to that conversation at all, well, what do, you, what do you think about that, Dad? I said, I'm about building bridges, not tearing them down. And they got real quiet. <laughs> they got real quiet. And so, number three, these are just things that happen. Number three, it leads to apostasy. That means a departure from the faith, which is really astounding. The first stage of apostasy is unthankfulness. It's the first step. There are steps that take us away from the Lord, and the first step is just not being grateful anymore. And you might be here today, and you might, I mean, all hell might be breaking loose in your life or watching me online. And my heart goes out to you. We all go through stuff. I get it. But one thing that you can be grateful for is your name's written down in the Lamb's Book of Life, baby. Amen. And there is nothing better than that. You have a hope and a confidence. The Bible says, draw near to God. God will draw near to you regardless of the circumstance that's happening in your life. The grace of God, the Spirit of God, and Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the same. And He will intervene when we draw near to Him by faith. And so... It's what happened to Lucifer is that he became ungrateful with his position. See, all of us, 
God will add you to a church, and then there's an assignment he'll give you. What are you talking about? Let me get simple. What strikes the chord in your life? I just love making cookies, and I celebrate your gifting. See, Christianity is not just about receiving, it's about giving away from ourselves. And God has deposited giftings and talents in our life that, that, that can flow in the local church, the community of his church, to be a blessing. And so, Lucifer, who turned to Satan, the devil, snake, was not happy with his position. Oh, God, let me, let me think now. You are the head worship leader in heaven. I mean, you are the lead worshiper in heaven. You were one of the three archangels, which is like Father, Son, Holy Spirit, archangels. Michael, Gabriel, Louis, <laughs> Lucifer. <laughs> and he became ungrateful with his assignment. And we have to guard our hearts from that. Now, on the other hand, Thanksgiving opens the door for good things to happen in our lives. How many nudge your neighbors and say, this is a good part right now. Here we go. <laughs> Number one, I love this. It opens the door to God's favor, success, and happiness. Show me somebody, show me somebody who's happy, and I'll show you somebody who's very generous. They're just generous. They're just generous. They're happy. They're generous. They, they wake up smiling. Ah. <laughs> Wendy wakes up and she has a revival. She runs to the coffee maker. <laughs> I watch the revival every morning. So. How many glad you had your coffee today? Okay. Dr. Jim Rohn, this is interesting. Dr. Jim Rohn, uh, who studies, found something interesting. A man who studied the lives of successful men and women across America found out that the number one ingredient to happiness, achievement, and success, well, this is deep, is first to be thankful. Just be thankful. Thankful for your wife. Thankful for your kids. Thankful for the dog. That's challenging. <laughs> thankful for the cat. See, thankful. And I love this one. Number two is that there's absolute power in thanksgiving. Offering up thanksgiving to God can turn your situations and circumstances around so quick it will make your head spin. So quick it will make your head spin. There's this dude named Jonah. I'm sure you've probably never heard of him before. And he has an attitude toward the nation that God told him to go and preach repentance to. And he's on a boat, and all these storms are happening, and all the problems are happening, and he knew exactly he was operating in disobedience, and disobedience opens the door to things that we don't want to happen in our life. Because he wasn't following the plan of God, his assignment for his life. And so there's this huge fish that came along, and and Jonah told the, the crew, you know, the problem is not throwing people or throwing these things over. If you just throw me over, your problems will be, will be solved. That's amazing. We're going to throw the preacher overboard. <laughs> not necessarily Pastor Appreciation Day, is it? <laughs> and so they chucked him into the ocean. The Bible says the Lord created a great fish, and it swallowed him up. But Jonah became a hot potato in the belly of the fish. The Bible says he offered up with the voice of thanksgiving to God. He repented. In this situation, he repented. He got right. But he offered up thanksgiving and praise to God in the belly of the fish. The Bible says he had seaweed wrapped around his head. And God spoke to the fish just like God will speak to your circumstance. And it vomited him onto dry land. That was one gooey deliverance. <laughs> Literally, the Bible says that it had seaweed wrapped around his face and head. But it, you can't think of a, of a worse situation to be in. But regardless of the circumstance, there's nothing that God can't bring you out of. There's nothing that God can't heal you from. Amen. And he offered up the sacrifice of praise unto God 
in, in, in the middle of that situation. And so there's absolute power in thanksgiving. Being thankful. So I want to give you an assignment this week. Is that okay? Can I give you an assignment? Pastor's assignment. Be grateful. Be thankful. And find some promises, which you already have, and, and speak them out of your mouth. There's one in Hebrews 13, 15. Let us offer unto him the sacrifice of praise continually. That is the fruit of our lips. Confessing thanks to his name. But there's, there's, there's thousands of promises that you can just, just be thankful. Lord, thank you for saving me from the pits of hell. I mean, you're just, you're just riding your car and out of the blue, just, just rip it out. Lord, thank you for saving me from the pits of hell. Thank you that you've healed me and you've given me healing promises. Thank you that you're, you're intervening in my life right now in Jesus' name. Thank you that your word says that when I pray according to the word of God, you will hear and you will answer. Whoa. Thank you when you said, I, when I draw near to you, you'll draw near to me. And so there's absolute power in thanksgiving. Number three, it, it leads to wholeness. Being grateful leads to wholeness. Luke 17, the ten lepers, here we go. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten who were lepers, who stood afar off, and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, go show yourselves to the priest. And so as they went, they were cleansed. They were cleansed. It says, and one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned with a loud voice and glorified God. So it was a very animated situation. And fell down on his face and his feet, giving, them, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answered, said, here we go. He looks for it. Jesus answered, said, were there not ten cleansed? Question mark. The Bible says question mark. But where are, the, where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? He said to them, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. Now, this is what this means. It means that any body part on the outside and on the inside, any body part that was eaten away with leprosy is completely made whole, and the inside is made whole as well. How many glad you've been made whole? And so, 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 you know, a lot of people, let's, let's just use, you know, you're going through a circumstance and God delivers you, God brings you out, it's just so incredible. Keep thanking him for that. Remember things he brought you through. Those are things we're supposed to remember. Remember as like a memorial in our mind how God brought you through certain circumstances, how God healed you. And thank him for it. Be grateful for that. Thank you, Lord, you're restoring health to me and healing me of my wounds is something I say every day. And so, it's just, but everything, any body part that was eaten away by leprosy was totally restored, fingers, toes, etc. Why? Because he gave utter praise and thanksgiving and he returned to give God glory. How many blessings have passed us by because we just kind of go on thinking, oh, that's the way it is, you know. Number four, it's a secret to answered prayer. Really, really is. Wow. It really is. Love what thanking God before in advance, what Paul says in Philippians 4, 6. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. With thanksgiving. So, the New Testament pattern is to pray to the Father in the name of Jesus for the things you desire. And then once you make that prayer request, you shift over to the, to the prayer of thanksgiving. I'm just thanking God. He's going to do it. He's going to do it in Jesus' name. And Lord, I just thank you for it. See, that's real faith. That's real Bible faith. I'm thanking you, Lord, in advance for that. Lord, I'm thanking you for a 10-point buck, 150-inch rack in Jesus' name. <laughs> See? You're just driving. You're going along. You just, you just rip it out. You let it out. Lord, I thank you for that. Thank you for adding new families to Mount Hope Church every day in Jesus' name. And so it's, it's a secret to answered prayer. It's just it's being thankful. Thank you, Lord. Enter his gates with? Into his courts with? Be thankful unto him and bless his name was actually 
Actually, the protocol to enter the Holy of Holies when God spoke to Moses. It's not it's so, there's all these revelations within Rob, all these depths. It's like a, a diamond, multifaceted. That, that, that was the entryway into the Holy of Holies. And so, how important is thanksgiving to God and us today? It's the very will of God for us to be thankful. Regardless of our circumstances, we're told to be grateful. In everything, give thanks. Not for everything, but in everything. So the tree limb falls down off from the tree and crushes the car, and insurance companies call that an act of God. No, it's not. You can tell I have an attitude toward this because I'm tired of reading those things. I read one the other day. No, the acts of God is healing, deliverance, and mercy and kindness. Amen? And so, in everything, give thanks. Not for everything, but in everything. But, but this is what I'm talking about right here. This is what we're, we're going to wrap things up. I'm glad you came to church today. It's the protocol. And you might know this, but let it be reinforced. It's a protocol into God's presence is through thanksgiving. And we, and we talked about enter his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise, be thankful on him, and bless his name. Old Testament kings would establish official thankers to thank the Lord all day long for his goodness and mercy shown to them. But it's how the priests would enter. You had the outer court, you had the inner court. In the outer court, there was the, 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 the tabernacle in the wilderness, and they would burn the sacrifice. People would come and they would bring a sacrifice for their, for their sins and iniquities. And that thing would be burned up, and the life of it was a sweet, sweet smell to God. Something had to pay the price for their iniquity and for their sin. And this is how they did it in the Old Testament. I mean, they were just chopping, they were killing heifers left and right. It was a bloodbath. Imagine two to four million people in the wilderness, and they're, they're each bringing something, you know, for their sins. And so the priest would take that basin of blood, and he would sing in the outer court going into the inner court. Enter his gates, that's the, the partitions leading to the Holy of Holies. This is where the depth is at. When Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, you and I just say, oh, yeah, yeah like, praise God. <laughs> you don't get it. The way is the doorway, the truth, the life is, it literally said the life on the doorway into the Holy of Holies. So the way was written up here. The truth was written up there on these in these these doorways leading into the Holy of Holies. And when Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the light, they picked up stones right then. They were going to kill him. You're saying you're God. He is God. He is. So enter his gates with thanksgiving, of course, and he would take that basin of blood and he would sing on the way in. But we can come by a whole new living way, amen, church? By the blood of Jesus Christ. He is our high priest. But they would do that. But Old Testament kings would establish official thankers to thank the Lord all day long for his goodness and mercy shown to them. Guess who in the New Testament has taken up that priesthood? You. No, I'm not a priest. You are. The Bible says we're kings and priests unto him because of the blood of Jesus. And every born-again Christian today is a priest to offer up thanksgiving to God. Turn to your neighbor and say, that's you. <laughs> You see, you think of a priest, a collar and all that, but that's not a priest, it's someone who's cleansed in the blood of Jesus. You are a priest or a priestess because of your position and identity with Jesus Christ. You are part of the body of Christ. Think about it. Dead spirits don't go to heaven. People who are born again go to heaven. Jesus said, well, you must be born again to enter the kingdom of God. If you're born again, then you're a saint of God. Paul wrote to the, to the Christians at Rome, saints of God in Rome, I write to you. And so 1 Peter 2, 9 says this, you are a chosen, I love this, man, this is awesome. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're a royal priesthood. Don't laugh. Turn to the other neighbor, if you have one, and say, you're a royal priest. You're a royal priest. It's good. Just receive it. Just receive it because it's your identity and it's who you are in God. 
You're born again, you become a priest of God, okay? But you are, and this is Peter writing. Peter! But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people. You may proclaim the praises of him who's called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So I'm the one, you're the one, every born-again Christian is now the ones that take up that priesthood from the Old Testament into the New. We have a high priest, that's Jesus Christ, but now we're to offer up thanksgiving unto God, aren't we? Can we sing another song again? We got it's a good deal. Great. We're going to offer up thanksgiving to God here. Let's all stand together. Thank you, To the Holy One, give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ. worship you. Lord, we thank you so much for your goodness and your merciful kindness. Thank you, Lord, that our names are written down in the Lamb's book of life. Thank you that you're not holding anything against anyone, that you bid everyone to come to you because today is a day of salvation. Lord, we worship you. We magnify you. Let's just take a moment and just thank the Lord right now out of your own, your voice and proclamation. Lord, thank you for your goodness. Thank you, Lord how incredible you are, how good you are. Thank you for the anointing, Lord. Thank you that you turn things around in people's lives, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, for your great goodness, your merciful kindness, how your mercy is new every morning. Lord, we thank you for it. We thank you for it. Let's sing that again. Thank you. And now, let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich. Because
because of what the Lord has done for us. And now let the sick say, I am whole. Let the bound say, I am free because of what the Lord has done for us. You feel that? You can feel it. That's the anointing, man. thanks with a grateful heart give thanks to the holy one give thanks because he's given jesus christ his son and now let, let the weak say of what the Lord has done for us. And now let the sick say I am whole. Let the bound say I am free because of what the Lord has done. Breathe it in right now. Breathe the presence of God into you. Man, it's awesome. It's thick. It's rich. Keep playing. I love that. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we have nothing else to do but to worship you and to magnify you. There's nothing more. There's no more priority but you, Lord. There is nothing this world can give us but you. Thank you, Lord, that you're the bread of life. We magnify you. We thank you. We give you glory and honor. Thank you, Lord. Just one more time, and now. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. of what the Lord has done for us. And now let the sick say I am whole. Let the bound say I am free because of what the Lord thank you. We're so grateful for you, Lord, for the blood of Jesus that cleanses our sin. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of eternal life. Thank you, Jesus. You're our advocate. You stand with us. Thank you, Lord. Heads are bowed across the auditorium today. You're here today and you never recalled a time where you invited the Lord to come into your life or you're watching online and you never recalled a time we invite Jesus to come into your heart. Jesus is not a piece of jewelry. He's no longer on the cross anymore. He rose the third day. He's now at the right hand of God the Father, ever living to make intercession for you and me. He's praying for you right now, which is amazing. The Bible says if we believe in our heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and confess him with our mouth, we will be saved. 
So peradventure, you're here today and you never recall the time where you invited the Lord to come into your life or you're watching my on- online. I'm going to lead you in a simple prayer. All God's people are going to say this prayer, inviting the Lord to come in your life. Maybe you're away from the Lord. Maybe, maybe some things have transpired in your life over the last year or two. It's caused you to get a little angry. Let go of the anger, amen? Let go of it. Let go of that bitterness because it will defile you. Let go of it. God's bigger than that. Let go of that. Put yourself in this prayer as well. Say it with me. Dear God in heaven, I admit I have failed you. I've broken your laws and commands. But this Sunday I'm coming home. God, forgive me of all my sin. Jesus, come into my heart. Make your home in me. I boldly confess you're my Savior and my Lord today and forever. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. We welcome those. If you first, if it's your first time. You can follow the prompts on the screen. Those watching online, if you're here today, altar workers will be up here. We have a book we want to give you the start of something wonderful. Um, it's really a, a great read and a great start as well. I want to pray Psalm 91 over you, okay, everybody? Psalm 91 is, you talk about benefits and assets, wow, it's incredible. And it's Psalm 91 is yours. That's something you can say every day, all the time. Well, I pray over you, and I pray no evil would befall you, neither any plague come near your dwelling. For he will give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. A thousand will fall by your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you in Jesus' name. No car wrecks. Keep the deer away from the cars, Lord. I come against cancer in the name of Jesus. I rebuke it right now. I come against back pain. I call your back. You've got a back like an ox, eyes like an eagle, and the strength of a lion. Amen. Yeah, the greater one lives within you in Jesus' name. God bless you. We love you. We invite you to join us in person at Mount Hope Church in Grand Blanc, Michigan. If you'd like more information about Mount Hope Church and Pastor John Gallinetti, visit our website at mhcgb.com.